Welcome to Premium Cashflow Real Estate Investing Podcast with Sakar Kali. During this program, you will hear guest experts sharing their experiences, best practices, and market insights. We discuss investing in multifamily apartment complexes and how a busy professional can passively invest hassle-free in various opportunities. Your host, Sakar Kali, owns millions of dollars of assets and has done thousands of value-add projects over 20 years now. So listen in for insights. Here's your host, Sakar Kali. Welcome to another edition of Premium Cashflow Podcast. Today, I have the dual pleasure of hosting uh, Mauricio Ramos and Adrian Salazar. Both are from Texas. Uh, they have come in from a background of doing a lot of uh, single family wholesaling, fix up, flips. And they are now currently into uh, doing uh, some of the syndications and on the smaller multifamily side. So we are here to learn from their experience, how to get started, what their bumps have been. Uh, they represent the D. Medici Group. So both of you, uh, welcome. It is my pleasure to welcome uh, Mauricio and Adrian. Thank you for taking Thank time you. today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for thanks. having us. Thanks, Good. Sakar, for having us. Awesome. It's a pleasure. Awesome. Uh, just uh, how, how about this? Let's let's kick off. Uh, uh, give us some background uh, briefly, uh, both of you, and we can uh, kick it off. For sure. Again, thanks for the opportunity, Sakar. Um, so my name is Mauricio Ramos. I'm an immigrant to this country. I'm originally from Mexico. I'm 35 years old. I'm a founder of the Medici Group, uh, which, uh, which is a boutique uh, multifamily firm here in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, we own property in South Texas, in San Antonio, and uh, limited partners on property also here in San Antonio and Fort Worth. So pretty much across Texas. Awesome. Uh, so uh, how about you? Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh. I was just, uh, so also... Um, did construction for 10 years, uh, graduated as a civil engineer here from Texas A&M University, um, then, then did, start, worked for large commercial uh, construction companies, did that for 10 years, about into year six or seven, met Adrian as one of my interns, so he was my intern awesome. uh, as I was a project manager, and he introduced me to real estate which I didn't know anything about. And that's when I started kind of reading books, you know, typical, the purple book book and, and those, those nice books ch started changing my mindset and, and started going to RIAs, learning a little bit more. <clears throat> and then, you know, switched and in, went into, went into the whole multifamily. And now he, here we are as partners, uh, 64 units later. Awesome. How about yeah. you, Adrian? Yeah, exactly. how, how was your journey? <laughs> So my journey started off pretty young. Um, I first got started as an entrepreneur when I was about 15, 16. Um, I was part of a multi-level marketing direct selling organization and I was, you know, selling health and wellness products. Mm -hmm. And that was very early on in my, in my career when I guess, quote unquote, got bit by the entrepreneurial bug. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. That's when I started reading Think and Grow Rich. That's when I started reading Tony Robbins, watching, you know, all the Jim Rohn videos early on that, you know, I guess developed my mind enough to be able to take down what we're doing today. Right. But so sure. fast forward a couple of years, moved to San Antonio, uh, got a, um, a position here at the construction school. So I was studying construction management. Um, and between my freshman year and sophomore year of college, I got introduced uh, to a real estate networking club here in mm -hmm. San Antonio when I was about 17. Um, and I showed up and everyone in the room was, you know, doing real estate deals. They were all excited. They were happy. I mean, they were like, you know, super energetic. And I really wanted to be a part of this organization, signed up, met a mentor, and I started working for free for him for about a year and a half and mm -hmm. started, you know, wholesaling houses, kind of how we started. Um, and three, four years later, um, after realizing that wholesaling wasn't really scalable and it was more of a transactional business for me, um, sure. you know, when I was chasing cash flow, I started, uh, me and Mauricio put together a list of um, some, some multifamily properties because we said, hey, you know, let's go bigger, let's create cash flow for us. And, and that's, sure. you know, one of our whys to be able to travel and do things we love. Um, so we started, you know, marketing to these apartments and we bought a couple courses just to, you know, see how we can analyze these deals. And we were kind of putting numbers in the equations and 
sending out offers and some of them stick and some of them, you know, would call back and, you know, we would look at it really quick and put together an offer, send it out. And then we started wholesaling them because we already knew how to wholesale. So sure. we figured, Hey, let's start wholesaling some properties. So that way we can get a good experience and, you know, without, without risking too much of our own stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did about six or seven deals before we bought our first one. Um, it was an off market 16 unit direct owner that I found through a postcard. Um, you know, and we raised about $200,000 for that deal. It's going through major capex. We're up on the market right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Six months later, we bought a 32 unit. We syndicated it, uh, PPM and everything, uh, raised about 350,000 for that one. And Mm -hmm. we're almost done with the first year of repositioning on it. Um, And then a few months later, we bought a nine unit. Um, And so we've gone through also our fair share of property management companies. Mm -hmm. Um, And so right now today, we are vertically integrated and I operate all property management uh, and I oversee most of the CapEx stuff and me and Mauricio work really well together and we're looking for more. So we're looking for those bigger deals now, uh, ready to sell off all the small ones and go big, just like you guys. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I mean, there's so much, uh, you know, great stuff that both of you shared in, in your intro that we can, you know, kind of step by. Uh, you know, kind of uh, break it down, uh, you know, slowly. Um, There, uh, Mauricio, you shared that you came from Mexico and, uh, you know, it's a very inspiring story. Um, uh, You know, could you maybe share a bit more pieces about what it is like for someone to kind of come from an international uh, side and kind of go through that journey. I mean, when you pointed that out, uh, Mauricio, it reminded me of my early years. I mean, I came to this country in 1997. I did not know what a drywall or a piece of drywall was or what a utility knife meant. And when I started rehabbing my first house, uh, you know, everything that the contractors were doing, I was watching uh, like a, almost like a, a small kid it's like, wow, you can cut something that sharp. And I had not seen a utility knife. Uh, could you maybe perhaps share how it was like for you and what it meant when you kind of transitioned into uh, real estate and how, how, how were your first experiences? Of course, of course. Yeah. And it's, it's been a, a great journey. So uh, I was born in Yucatan and I grew up in Matamoros, uh, Tamaulipas, which is a, across the border on the south, of, south side of Texas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And on the real estate side, when I grew up, I grew up in a neighborhood where when I, when I started living there, when we moved there, it is a brand new house and, and they were building all these houses around us. So all the time, you know, I would go out and play with my friends and there was at least two or three houses in construction. Mm-hmm. So I would, we would go in the houses when they were in the middle of construction and we would sure. see the process, right? So that always was engraved in my mind. Mm-hmm. So I think that's why I wanted to go go for construction. So which, which in my head is a little li- different in the U.S. But in Mexico, if you want to do construction for a living, then you go to study either architecture or civil engineering. Mm-hmm. And there's no such thing as a construction degree. Sure. So I was pretty good at math. So I was like, okay, civil engineering, right? So my dad sent me to the U.S., came to the U.S. and graduated as a civil engineer, and then straight went straight into construction. So. So go, going into construction was kind of like a little bit of what I had seen when I was a kid throughout mm-hmm. all those years, right back mm-hmm. home. Mm-hmm. And then, and then seeing all that good stuff in, in the construction, you, you know, I, we built a uh, full blown high schools from a cane field to a, a 300,000 uh, square feet high school with a full blown stadium, mm-hmm. the, the whole nine yards, sure. mm-hmm. um, hospitals, uh, commercial projects uh, Adrian and I did together a commercial project downtown San Antonio mm-hmm. so seeing all that process and then going into remodeling our own properties mm-hmm. that was kind of a piece of cake right so that whole transition mm-hmm. for us was was kind of like a piece of cake now on the more on the cultural side um, it, it's it's I mean this is the land of the opportunity right I mean sure. it, it's, mm-hmm. it's 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 and it's also when you look back, there's no turnaround, right? I, it's you, you, I'm not a U.S. citizen, right? So U.S. citizens that, that have that fortune of, you know, maybe I can try this job. And if it doesn't work, then, well, I mean, I'll just try something else, right? I was here working sure. on there. I worked visa. So mm-hmm. I didn't have the privilege of, of quitting and then just 
going to find another job or sure. just go to Whataburger uh, and work there for three months while I find another job, right? I couldn't sure. do that, sure. right? I had to mm-hmm. work for that employer. So there's no turnaround. And you know that that you're doing better here than with what you could be doing at home. Sure, so, sure. So mm-hmm. there's there's just, it's it's the, the opportunities and the future was, was just huge. And then when I learned about the entrepreneur side and the in, in the investor side it's just open all those all those all that horizon absolutely absolutely and you said that right Mauricio that you know you have to make it work like if you are into something you have to see that through you have to make your earnest effort to make it successful because as an entrepreneur uh, or rather as an immigrant entrepreneur you know you're kind of working on your visa and things like that right and there's no turning back, as you rightfully said, that you have to give your best and, uh, you know, see those things through whatever you're working on and learn and prove your best. And believe me, I have been there and I, I can completely relate to your story right there. So, and, and turning on a little bit, you know, here, um, uh, both of you, you know, can you share how important it is uh, for real estate investors uh, to know construction? You know, like I feel that both of you have a significant leg up when it comes to, uh, you know, like um, walking the properties, looking at some assets, understanding that, okay, what is wrong or how much work it needs? Because, uh, you know, as we all know, like, okay, you enter into a house, you know that, okay, it needs work. I mean, any any, uh, sort of a common person can tell. But the difference between, okay, knowing that it needs work, but knowing that how much it is going to take, that requires an immense construction experience. Can you share uh, with our audience that how has your construction background helped you now you're doing several deals, you're doing the repositions and things like that? Of course, uh, you want to let me take this one, Adrian, and you'll take the yeah, property yeah, management yeah. side. Sure. sure. So, mm-hmm. so Definitely just knowing, seeing most of the trades that you'll see in a commercial project, you know, I haven't seen every single one, but most of the trades that you'll see in a commercial project uh, and being able to walk into a property and, and assess what what will take to remodel. And or sometimes you you know that maybe the seller doesn't have an idea of what it's going to take to do it. And mm-hmm. you know, you know what it is. You've seen it done or mm-hmm. you know what it will take to do it. Mm-hmm. And also knowing how to talk to the contractors, right? You, you, we, with our, our experience as, as general contractors and property and project managers, we can skip the GC. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can take him out of the equation, right? And we can sure. go straight to the, to the uh, subcontractors and hire sure. them out and then, you know, make the project more affordable sure. and more cost effective. So that construction background is, is definitely very good. Also, when talking to the contractors, it's, it's, hardly, it's, it's very hard for a contractor to honestly poke my eyes after doing this for 10 years. Sure. Uh, mm-hmm. I, again, I don't know every trade, right? I mean, maybe sure. when it comes to communications or something uh, more complex, yeah, I might not know much about that. But sure. the basic stuff... Uh, you know, I can see a price and it's like, come on, this is BS. This is no way this can cost as much, right? Sure, sure. Or, mm-hmm. or if they tell us, oh, I have to do all this to fix it. I, I've seen it done before and I know this, this is all it takes, right? So right, right. Mm-hmm. The, being able to develop those, those, um, those relationships in that trust. Also, showing to the contractors that you know, right? That's, sure. that's, that's mm-hmm. how you earn your, their respect, right? Not necessarily by pointing fingers, but Hey, this is this is really how I've seen it done. Sure, mm-hmm. and they they'll realize, oh, this this guy no, he seems young, and you know sometimes it's this fifty year old guy, right? Sure. But they realize that you've done it. You you can speak the language, and they, they'll stop trying to you know get an extra nickel out of you, right? They'll just be absolutely, they, absolutely. They know that you know. So that definitely goes a long way. Sure, sure, sure. Now, uh, Adrian, uh, yeah. you want to speak to the. Um, you know, the sort of the property management maintenance uh, element of these, like when you're kind of going through day-to-day activities, how important it is to kind of control the CapEx or different things that uh, you may be doing. You want to speak to that element? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I think it goes kind of hand in hand with what we're doing now, as far as like what we were talking about construction wise and, you know, maintenance wise. 
Sure. <laughs> As it's a little weird right now because we're not getting to, you know, very minor maintenance um, mm -hmm. things. Sorry, it froze up a little bit. Um, but, you know, we are still renovating um, as we go, but I think it's important to continue. So we use Buildium, we use an online software, property management software called Buildium, where every tenant is confirmed their text account. Every tenant has an email, every tenant pays on the, you know, on the, on there, the announcements are on there. So sure. being, being in communications with the tenants has also allowed us to, you know, ride out this COVID wave very well. Um, sure. And, mm -hmm. you know, we've had very strong collections because of our communications with all of our tenants. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. While we tend to the maintenance requests that need to get done and things like that. So, I mean, all, all of that is operational. I mean, you need a team, you need a leasing agent, you need marketing, you know, mm -hmm. people, marketing units to try to bump up rents. Sure. You need all of that. And our maintenance guys float around through different properties because we have that, several different ones. Sure. So like Mauricio said, I mean, they know we know. So mm -hmm. it's super important um to have them kind of going around and, and, and floating and doing things for you but um to touch on the construction stuff too you know you have to have a vision i mean you have to have a vision for something i mean that that isn't just made overnight you really have to study it go on pinterest look up some interior design you know mm -hmm. things i mean go to some apartment instagram pages apartment locators and look at some ideas and then mm -hmm. go on you know, Amazon and Alibaba and look for some, you know, good prices on some, you know, materials and, sure. and mm -hmm. pictures and furniture. I mean, try to find really good deals. That way you can, you know, decrease your CapEx as much as you can, but still provide quality, you know, renovations. And, sure, sure. Um, mm -hmm. you know, all, you have to have a vision and be curious. I mean, you have to go in there and be curious. That, that's what's going to allow you to gain respect from these contractors too. Because sure. if you if you might not know something and they mm -hmm. leave the job site and they're gonna come back tomorrow, stay there a little later. Stay there a little later. Look in the unit. Why is why is this happening and why is that plug not you know? So sure. like ask yourself things. L to stay little curious. things like that. Yep. Yep. And I and I promise like you'll learn it. You'll learn it and and, and be obsessed with it. Be obsessed with it because I, I am I've. I've stayed in units late. So just, yep, yep, just yep, yep. I, I can I can see the passion and I can see, you know, you're very devoted to this. And I think what you're also yeah. alluding to is kind of the uh, bringing that personality or that unique creativeness in your re renovations, whether that's uh, having a, uh, you know, like an accent wall or an accent paint uh, on some walls or perhaps having some, uh, you know, creative uh, wall hangings or some things like that. They add those little elements. Could I mean, it could be a small thing in your hallway, but that speaks to your personality that you just care. It's not about just a common, like normal painted hallway uh, that you just, uh, you know, it looks pretty bland. But when you Absolutely. start adding some of the accent or some creative touches, maybe it's a two-tone paint and things like that. It, those little things matter. And so, you know, when, of the, uh, when prospects are visiting, they'll, they'll, they'll appreciate that, yes, you care, you know? Yeah, and now, absolutely. Now moving on, uh, some of the deals you did, now you have raised some capital, things like that. Can you maybe share some first uh, stories about, uh, you know, some of the difficulties or challenges that you may have faced when you were raising capital for your deals? Uh, yeah. yeah. So the first, the first property that we bought together, we raised about 175 K mm -hmm. close to 200. And I mean, our investors were friends and family basically. Right. I mean, I you, mm -hmm. you don't, you don't go all the way to, it was, it was such a small deal that, uh, you know, it wasn't a full blown syndication, more of a partnership with, with friends and family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in honestly, at that point it's your investors are investing in you right? Sure. They're not necessarily investing in the deal. They might not know enough about the deal. Sure. They're just investing in you. They, they know, they've seen your, your, you know, your, your three, four, five year track record that you've been doing good with, mm -hmm. with smaller apartments uh, or a couple single families, those first mobile homes that I bought mm -hmm. and they believe in you. You know, one of my investors is, is a coworker, right? We work together. Mm -hmm. I was a project manager. He was a superintendent for, for this project uh, that we did together and he knew my basically my business mm -hmm. ethics, right? And how sure. I mm -hmm. how I manage the entire project and my subcontractors mm -hmm. and and the other coworkers. And he he saw that I was doing on the side. I was doing real estate. So mm -hmm. when I left the company and said, "Hey, um, I'm gonna do real estate just full full time. That's it. I'm doing I'm doing good enough that I can quit my job." He was like, mm -hmm. "Let me know when you buy the next one. I want to jump in with you." Right? Nice. It's, mm -hmm. 
So, and then as we've grown, as we've grown, we've had people reach out to us and, um, you know, other friends and, and, and people that we've known that they want to invest with us. And also we've reached out to other, you know, that we, other investors that we know that are in the market in, in our interests align, right? You have to make sure that your interests align with your investors and, and vice versa. Mm-hmm. So, so we've reached out in, you know, sometimes is, is a lot of people will say, yes, I'll jump in, I'll jump in, come in for this much, count me in for this much. But when it's time to wire the money, then not, not everyone is there. So, yeah, sure, so sure. you have to go the extra mile and raise a little extra money. Uh, and, and like we you also said, started a, a meetup, the meetup. So we, uh, Mauricio and I decided, Hey, you know, we're, we're, we're all in, you know, we're all in, let's, let's, let's go, let's have a month, you know, a meeting a month. Mm-hmm. And we started that same month we bought the 16 unit, we started our meetup and we looked at each other and said, let's ride this out all nice. year. Mm-hmm. I don't care if one person shows up, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. it's just, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna pay out. And we started having different topics and 20, 30, 40 people would show up. And that's what helped us raise money for our 32 unit. I mean, I think we put ourselves in a different, um, you know, platform for sure. more people to know about us. And, mm-hmm. and you know, we, we were considered experts in, the, in, in that, you know, in this industry. So, you know, we started doing that. And I think your brand is really important to making sure that <clears throat> you put content, you put, you know, what you're doing on the day to day on your on your stories and let people know what you do and, and take care of your brand. Don't screw people over for money. Sure. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I've done deals for one hundred dollars. I mean, it, I, it just c- nurture your brand. And that's really, I think, to follow up on Mauricio is people invest in me, Mauricio, you know, sure, because they sure. know that that we are committed and. I think that's what you have to have in order to reach success in this business is you just have to commit to things. Sure. Some people are a little too scared to commit, you know, they want to know it all and you have to, you have to really just make a decision that you want, you want more out of life. And, you know, I think that's when all the money will then just start getting attracted to you and and people are going to start popping up into your life, wanting to invest with you. I think that's, you know, it's, it's key. You know, it's one of the basics. Awesome. Awesome. Now you started from, let's say, doing a lots of single family houses and, you know, doing some wholesaling and flips, you know. So as you moved into, you know, let's say the larger or the mid-sized deals that you're doing now, what was different or why, why did you like the sort of that <clears throat> multifamily route? Uh, what was it about uh, it that, you know, you found it so much appealing? Can you maybe share some, some experiences or perhaps what was it that you liked about multifamily so much? Yeah. So I, I, uh, I'm a big, you know, believer in financial freedom and, and I chase that every single day, mm-hmm. you know, and when I was doing single family wholesaling, I mean, we were making 10, 20, $30,000 on each wholesale fee. So mm-hmm. it was, it was good money, but it was transactional. So it sure. was, you know, if, if I was sick one day or if I just, you know, was sore from a workout or something, I, I mm-hmm. couldn't get up. That means that I didn't have that next deal coming in through the pipeline. So then, you know, I, I uh, after Mauricio, Mauricio will probably tell you a little bit more about his travels, but after he did several of his travels, he kind of inspired me to travel. And I went on a, you know, two month backpacking trip throughout Southeast Asia. And I came back and I said, Hey, like, I really want to, you know, travel for the rest of my life. I want to see all the cool parts of this world. And, you know, wholesaling and transactional based businesses weren't going to get me there. You know, I want to be Mm -hmm. able to, to, you know, have passive income to be able to pay me while I'm on these, you know, vacations. And I think that's one of my big whys. And we saw multifamily, we saw cash flow, we saw the the ability to increase the value of the property by raising rents or decreasing expenses. And it Mm -hmm. increases the value of the apartment building drastically, drastically compared to a house that, you know, you can't, you can't sell it for more than the house down the street sold for. I mean, you just, you can't, even if you put gold countertops, I mean, it's not going to sell for more, you know? And and that's what we saw, you know, multifamily and we saw the ability to create, I mean, true, true wealth. Um, And we stuck with it. I haven't done a a single family deal in the last three, four years, other than the one that I sold to Mauricio as a rental, but uh, (laughs) yeah, yeah, (laughs) I haven't done a deal in a while. So, nice, to, nice. To, expand, to expand a little bit on what Adrian said. So for me, uh, I started, I did a, a, I did a few mobile homes, a couple of mobile homes that I bought cash and then owner financed out. And I really enjoyed the owner finance uh, model. Uh, 
mm-hmm. and then and then did a couple of single families with Adrian, and it was more of a walks on, walks off training, sure. where door door knocking and sending a lot of postcards with some some attention, but uh, closed a couple of deals only, mm-hmm. and, and did some did some money. But for me, it was the the fact that the, the comps, right, getting mm-hmm. the comps to sure. send an offer. Adrian would help me with that. But to me, it was like, ah, I don't know, man. Like, why would it, why does it have to be so subjective? Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then, and then sure enough, in one of a, one of the podcasts that I, that I listened to, uh, some, a guru from, from the multifamily side came on mm-hmm. and started explaining, you know, how the NOI works and income minus expenses. And then you sure. divide it by the cap rate and then that's your purchase price. Like very math driven. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, me being an engineer is like, this is it, right? This, I love it. So sure. I started, I bought a little program online and understood the whole thing, bought a calculator. Mm-hmm. Uh, even for a little while, I had my own little spreadsheet. And, and so started just, just uh, devouring a lot of information on the multifamily and just mm-hmm. it, all that kind of clicked in my head. Mm-hmm. And I started sending postcards, sending offers based on, you know, what I knew back then on my sure. little calculator and sure enough, got a 10 unit apartment complex, bought it. Mm-hmm. And you know, it, the, whole, the whole thing went, made sense, right? I put a bunch of money into it and then, and then I, I sold it for, and did more than twice my money. So nice. mm-hmm. it's just, you know, it blew my mind. Also wholesaled a couple of multifamily deals and made six figure, uh, uh wholesale fees. So it, it's just, just from knowing the math and you know, knowing how to find a seller, knowing how to find a buyer and then marry those two together sure. mm-hmm. is, is, is just, uh, you know, mind blowing. Nice. Nice. Now both of you have a nice partnership where I think one of you probably handles the property management, uh, you know, and all the sort of the CapEx, uh, uh, side of things. And perhaps w- one of you may be the marketing or the deal hunting side of things, right? Can you maybe share, uh, what what some of your strengths are and perhaps how you have combined them and kind of uh, uh, kind of catapult your company to uh, you know like greater strength can you talk about sort of those varying uh, strengths between both of you that you have combined together now sure you, yeah. You can so, yeah so so um, I starting off starting off from you know single family I was really the type to find deals like I got obsessed with how people would say, there's no deals, send me deals, send me deals, send me deals. I have money, you know, send me deals. So I got obsessed with how do I find deals? Right. Mm -hmm. And so I went off and, and, you know, really got aggressive with things and just implemented those same tactics into multifamily. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, it, it gets a little bit more tricky on with, multifamily because there's companies that own the apartments and then there's multiple other companies that own those companies. So you have to really go down to find owners and numbers and Mm -hmm. addresses and stuff. And I got really obsessed with that. Um, so I feel like that's Mm -hmm. one of my, you know, really good strengths, um, Mm -hmm. of finding deals and, and talking to people. I think, you know, I'm, I'm a big people's person. I'm a huge extrovert. I'll make friends with anybody. Sure. Um, and even my tenants. So, I mean, it's just, it's one of those things where I'm more active boots on the ground. Um, and Mauricio is more managing the investor relations and the budgets and make, sure. letting me know, Hey, this is, you have two, $3,000 per unit in this property, make it happen. So that's when I'll start, you know, getting my subcontractors in line. And then Mauricio is really good at, you know, um, like, Hey, make sure that they sign this, the form, the liability form, make sure mm-hmm. that the documentation is correct. The contracts, the, mm-hmm. you know, make mm-hmm. sure all of that is done properly. And, and so we have different roles that we feed off of each other, sure. um, mm-hmm. which really helps. And he's really good at underwriting and analyzing properties. Nice. Um, mm-hmm. You know, for example, a big property, we just got recently a lead and um, you know, we're working it right now. I, you know, talk to the owner, I'm talking to the owner and, you know, get all the info that Mauricio needs to underwrite the deal, like mm-hmm. PNL, C12, rent rolls, everything. And I'll send it to him and I'll be like, Hey, what number do I need to be at? You know, just <laughs> so, so, so he'll go, he'll spend, you know, his, his day underwriting or you know half day. And then he'll let me know, all right, we need to buy it at this. And then gotcha. I'll go back and, and then we'll, we'll kind of 
tossed around like that. But, got it, got um, it. So Mauricio is the brain, and you're the legs of the company, basically. <laughs> <laughs> we're still, we're still, uh, you know, as we grow, we're still is definitely not delineated. But uh, sure, it, there's, there's sometimes there's a lot of overlap, but some, I mean, you know, I get it that sometimes someone owns the, like the majority of it, and you know, sort of there's some overlap. But but go ahead. And a lot of it, a lot of it comes from my experience in in just in construction, right? Corporate America, uh, you know, we were, we had huge contracts with owners and huge contracts with, uh, you know, million dollar contracts with subcontractors. So managing all that paperwork and doing it right and the documentation, that's, that's just me because I, sure. I, I learned how to do it. Sure. Hmm. Adrian wasn't expo exposed for that long to it. So I'm kind of the one that, 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 Champions, uh, all of that. Yep, fo absolutely. Focuses on all that. And mm -hmm. uh, so a very, very uh, overall, like bigger picture, which again, like you said, there's a, a lot of overlap, but I sure. would probably uh, take care of most of the asset management side. Mm -hmm. we're, we're vertically integrated. So 210 Management is our, our uh, vertical uh, sure. uh, or our mm -hmm. property management company that manages all of our properties. So... So he takes care of all the management side. Sure, I just give sure. him my input here and there, but he takes care of all that stuff. He has a leasing agent that he works with and also maintenance people and, and third party contractors. And then also on the, on when it comes to talking to a new lead, a new property, and then when it comes to talking to the lender and the insurance people and all that, setting up, basically setting up and acquiring the property mm -hmm. might be a little bit of my fourth day. And then when it's us, it's like Adrian said, all right, here it is. You have to, you have to get it done with this amount of money. Go. Right. Sure, and then, sure, and then sure. I just, yeah. I just, just, I just got his back. That's it. No, I, I totally agree with you. I mean, you know, it is a team sport as we are discussing, right? I mean, there's so much to do sometimes that, some, you know, someone has to own it and run with it. And there are definitely parts, as you alluded, that there's, you know, there's some overlap, uh, you know, somebody, you know, front runs this and someone can, you know, backfill some of the information that may be needed. So all, all great points that I, I totally appreciate th that. Now, uh, speaking of underwriting, Adrian, um, like when you are kind of visiting the properties and things like that, uh, what are some of the so, sort of the practical side of things that you are looking at, whether it's, uh, you know, just the general, uh, I mean, not, not talking about the actual due diligence or perhaps what an inspector, home inspector would do some of the home inspection related things. Not, of the, not, not to that extent, but as you're underwriting or walking the deals, what are some of the things you're looking like? Uh, I mean, are you, ta are you looking for a solid property with a good tenant base? Uh, give us some of your initial checklist that comes to your mind. Uh, sure. So great, great question. So um, one of the most, you know, important things that you know I do or we do uh, before we get to a property our lead is we drive the neighborhood we drive around right so sure. you know I'll, I'll drive a couple hours before around the area you know and that'll kind of tell me more or less a little bit, bit about the you know how I can make more curb appeal let's say how we can you know really boost this this property on compared mm -hmm. to what it is compared to what it could be the mm -hmm. lighting right of course the the four major components the roof the ACs electrical plumbing any foundation issues. I mean, those are pretty obvious to, to go in there and see, um, you know, from what we know, right? But sure. um, those are the major things, right? And if you get to walk a couple units, um, you know, then you, that's when you really start seeing that vision that I told you earlier, sure. like, hey, mm -hmm. you know, because of, you know, in our specific market, we know what works, the apartment mm -hmm. units that we're renovating, we're getting 200 above you know, rents. So sure. we know how to get there. It's a proven model. So mm -hmm. then, mm -hmm. you know, as I'm walking properties, I'm seeing, Hey, let me, let me, well, here's my proven model. What is it going to take to get to this unit? Some are sure. bigger, some are two bedrooms, some are three bedrooms. So then the numbers start kind of playing in my head. Sure. Um, but so, I mean, central air is, is, is really key that we look at, um, you know, hip roofs are also um, some of the ones that we like. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, lighting, lighting, we like to enhance the lighting on properties. Uh, mm -hmm. We like to see where we can add some income. If there's, for example, the 16 unit that we bought in January of 2019, mm -hmm. there was a room, an abandoned room that had two plugs for washers, two plugs for dryers, mm -hmm. um, and they were non-operating. It was a storage room. And sure. the owner mm -hmm. told me he didn't, he didn't want it to be a laundry room because he didn't want other property tenants to be going ins inside here and washing. Sure. And I said, dude, that's not, that's not that big of a problem. So 
we, we got it up and running in about two, three months. We added about $160 a month of um, a laundry income. Same thing with the 32 unit. We saw an abandoned facility that was not working. Mm -hmm. um, and we went in there and, and put four washers, four dryers. And last month we got a check for like almost $500. Nice. So if you do mm -hmm. the math, $500 a month times 12, times, you know, 12 months divided sure. by your cap rate, oh, I mean, cap rate. That, that value increase. So it's we tremendous. look at properties, yep. <laughs> most of the properties we're looking at have huge upside. So that's where we go in and we, you know, we using Mauricio's experience and, and, you know, we put it together a budget and then we say, Hey, let's, let's, what can we do with this amount of money to each of the units um, mm -hmm. to, to turn it around, right? Amenities. Is there any amenities that you can add? Sure. Um, sure. There's a property mm -hmm. we're looking at that has an abandoned, you know, piece of land that's not being used, abandoned basketball courts that are not used. I mean, you have to go in there and really, you know, improve sure. the, the, the property, right? Those are the majority of the deals that we're looking at right now. Awesome. So, awesome. Um, Mauricio, you want to add, add any of it from your side when deal comes to you? I mean, how, how some of the things you are looking that uh, you can, you want to further elaborate on that? For sure. For sure. So it, it's like Adrian said, the value add, right? We sure. walk in and where is it that we can add value, right? Sure. Um, <laughs> is it, is, are these units outdated? Are they mm -hmm. big enough? Are they, is there any room for a laundry room for additional amenities for another unit? Maybe these units are huge and we can split them in two, right? And we mm -hmm. can do a few extra units. Sure. Um, is, are there, is there anything that is not being monetized, right? Is, mm -hmm. is, the, is the owner paying for all the water, right? Sure. Can, we, can, mm -hmm. can we back charge that? Uh, sure. Pest control, mm -hmm. trash, um, mm -hmm. uh, property. The last property that I bought, uh, there, was, there was trash cans everywhere that, mm -hmm. because there was, there was three trash cans for each unit because of the recycle and the organics, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there was 20 plus uh, trash cans out there. So we just changed that and it looked like crap from the, like the crew appeal was pretty bad sure. from, from mm -hmm. the street, right? So we just mm -hmm. removed all those and added one, tra one dumpster and one recycle and now it looks it looks a lot cleaner, right? So absolutely, so absolutely. in that saving money, that saving money on the trash, mm -hmm. and, and now it looks a lot better, right? So those items, as you walk in, all right, this I can do better, this I can do better. As as Adrian, one point that you both touched on earlier is the vision, right? So sure. uh, one thing that we really like about uh, doing on our properties to make them unique. Uh, especially if you have another apartment complex next to you, right? How are you mm -hmm. going to differentiate other than painting it a different color, right? So we like right. implementing artwork. Uh, I, I, I really like artwork, as you can tell from my background. Sure. Uh, <laughs> so so two, two of our properties right now, we've brought a, uh, if you go to our, to our webpage or any of our social media, you can see it, uh, themedicigroup.com. It, we we have brought a local artist who is a is mm -hmm. a painter basically, mm -hmm. and and he's done murals for us on our property. Awesome. right? So now Incredible. from the street looks a lot better, right? Absolutely. A lot of colors, mm -hmm. uh, very unique. You know, it's a local artist that that we just share the ideas with him. Hey, mm -hmm. this is more or less what I want to do. We went back and forth and some some iterations of the drawing, sure, for the painting, and and all right, that's it. Love Why that I, idea. Absolutely. You just the, provided a great tip right there. It really so, pops. Yeah, it, absolutely. So, I can tell. I mean, we, we've yeah. seen all the colorful buildings for sure. You know, so uh, people, now, people would drive by and like, like yep. just, yeah. look, just look. I mean, absolutely. Hey, Couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. So when we go into, to, to tie it into the original idea, it's when we go into the, or especially in my mind, uh, I, as I go into a new property, I'm looking where am I, which is the wall that I'm going to paint? <laughs> I'm going to paint one, one of these walls and I want, I want to, I want people to sure. see it from the street. Which sure, one is sure. it? And, and many times I've had it where I've had it, some, some properties we haven't bought, right. But some properties that we've walked, we go mm -hmm. see them and is, this is it. This is, this is the one I'm going to paint. Sure, sure, sure. So it, it, is that having that vision, right? So Absolutely. those are some of the things that we look for. Awesome. Awesome. Between you, you just added so much ton of value there, whether it is, you know, like a bunch of, uh, you know, bad trash cans consolidating that, whether it's a new space, uh, you know, maybe it's, if it's a bad uh, area of the building that you want to consolidate, maybe perhaps use that as a common washer dryer area. You touched upon, uh, you know, like an unused basketball court that you can perhaps, uh, you know, bring it back to life you touched upon the creative side of the business where you know you can add some color some murals or perhaps some great uh, artwork uh, i mean local uh, giving 
you know sort of that local authenticity uh, to uh, you know to your image uh, of the building it's, it's incredible like as someone can walk in or from from the street view that can add a ton of value now now gents, yeah. gentlemen we are just about uh, reaching our time uh, one last question for both of you uh, you know is a uh, lot of folks who are getting started what can you give uh, sort of a realistic practical advice uh, for folks uh, who are getting started uh, adrian you want to take that first sure sure so um a few things for me um that have really helped i mean again sakar this is all from experience i mean sure. the reason why i'm here is 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 because of these things and i think one of the most important things and i'll always say it, is personal development i mean you have to continue growing you have to continue studying the greats you have to continue developing your mind to sure. be able to um you know reach those levels of success and 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 not only success but be able to overcome all of the challenges that you're going to be facing in this industry. And, sure. you know, I think uh, in life in general, there's a lot of challenges that you need to really pick yourself back up. Um, and I think that's rule number one for me, personal development, sure. continue studying 30 minutes at night, you know, in the morning, do, do a little bit of something. Jim Rohn uh, has so many powerful things that he says, and, and I really apply in my everyday life. If if someone um, can, and uh, so, by, by the way, Adrian, you you just touched one of my favorite uh, favorites. Jim Rohn is whom I absolutely adore and love, and and all of his oh, it, is right behind me here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, he says a lot of basic things that, um, sure. you know, I hear him playing when I'm making a decision, sure, or when I'm facing something new that really you know has me stressed out. I hear him in the background. You know, sure, it's sure, not the sure. set of the sale. You know, and so absolutely and, and all those things kind of, kind mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, play into, but number two, you know, for me, I think is action. Right. So, sure. so, you know, I, I guess before action, learn a little bit, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't learn it all. Sure. You know, I didn't have to go through the, all the calculations. I didn't spend $40,000 on a course. Sure. I mean, I, I, I learned a little bit applied, learn a little bit applied. It's kind of like Mauricio says, like sure. take two, three steps forward. And then you'll figure out four, five, six. Like you know, sure, sure. take a couple steps and then you know learn sure. it along the way and and embrace failure. Embrace it when people tell you you know get off the phone. You're wasting my time or, or you're trying to cold call brokers and they're like yeah, you don't even have a property. You don't even have a deal. Like you know don't 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 get so discouraged to that. Sure. Just you know grow. Get up and grow. Learn a little bit more and grow. Um, and you know I think a lot of people nowadays are looking at so many properties. Um, and, you know, underwriting so many deals and, you know, trying to raise money and dude, f find a deal, find a deal, fi find a property, focus on finding a property, Sure. like buy it to the best ability you can, like get it under contract to the best ability you can, and then you'll figure it out. Like just, just take sure. a step by step by step. I promise you, you're going to learn more than you will ever learn on any book and any podcast cast any youtube video by couldn't, buying couldn't agree first, more you know deal. don't over analyze just do it absolutely exactly. good how I about you that, how yeah, about you our, Mauricio? That's our, that's our strategy yeah sure thank so, you so so i mean it relates to to what adrian said and we didn't even prepare together for this for this question so sure uh change your mindset right mm -hmm. especially if you come from like i like i did from from a very traditional uh you know get a job and work there forever until you're retired sure. kind of mindset mm -hmm. to change your mindset, educate yourself and take action. Right. And don't, Absolutely. don't take, don't spend too much time on the on number one, number two, right. Change your mindset when you're kind of ongoing, go ahead and start educating yourself. And when you're ongoing, go ahead and, and, uh, take action. You never stop doing two and three, uh, one and two. You're always, sure. You always continue reading and, and listening to, you know, the Jim Rohns and the Grant Cardones and all those guys. Sure, sure. And, and then and keep educating yourself, right? Keep going to, uh, keep reading, keep going to seminars and, but take action, massive action. Um, I always say, you know, just jump and then, and then you build the parachute on the way down, right? Go Absolutely. and just, just do it. Take action, right? Awesome. You will, awesome. I can assure you that you, like Adrian was saying, you will learn a lot more. If you even if you buy a, an, an okay deal and you go through the whole process and at the end you make a little bit of money or I mean break even, just sure. the learning experience on 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 of that 
will give you a lot more than than waiting for that one home run where you're going to make a perfect deal, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> waiting for the for all the green lights to turn to, to be, you know, to all the lights to be green, right? It's not going to happen. So just take action, right? I mean, premeditate it, right? But but just go ahead, take action. That's absolutely, the, absolutely. Love that. And, and as you all pointed out, you know, as you go to different steps, there is a different challenge. But the great thing about it is, is that, I mean, nowadays, the, you know, the information, the expertise is so much accessible. I like to sometimes also say is that it's not just the resources, it's really your resourcefulness as well, that, you know, Absolutely. we all as entrepreneurs that it's, we have to be resourceful in, you know, pursuing, like, it's not about how, it's more about who can also tell us some of those information. And that's why I love the podcast as well, that I learn from every guest that comes on, they share a little bit of different things that, I mean, just for example, Mauricio, as you shared the, I mean, I have seen those murals, but I had never thought that, oh, geez, can I make that front wall as I open my apartment door, uh, you know, the main, uh, uh, you know, front door of the building, can I pop that in? And I think I'm going to steal that idea from you hey, now good. and, works, and see Go that if, if I can hire a, a mural artist and come on and, and maybe uh, have some colorful, it, it adds that extra punch and personality to the building. It's that element that I love that every guest that comes on, like we are, you know, so fortunate in this world of YouTube and podcasts and different things that we get to learn quite easily. And that's the best part that, and when I started to do this podcast, I'm finding out that there are just so many great guests and so many experienced people who love to share. And that's the best part. And, and I mean, you know, guys like you who are, you know, absolutely on the road doing deals and whatnot and what works, what doesn't work. That's, that's what it's all about. So Thank you for both of you for coming on. Uh, just one last, uh, just share your contact information, how folks can find you if they have a question or anything. Uh, just tell, tell our listeners how they can locate you and learn more about your company. Sure. sure. So uh, they can find me on Instagram, uh, Adrian Salazar underscore, um, I believe is the name. I'm pretty active on there. Sure. Um, mm -hmm planning on being a little bit more active on stories and renovations and things like that. Facebook, uh, you can also find me there. You can email me, adrian at optimumbuyers.com. Um, and that's really it. I mean, you'll be able to find me if you really want to find me. Um, awesome. Just mm -hmm. to kind of close on my end, I mean, you know, this business works. You know, it's not a matter of if it works or not. It's, it's are, are you going to work, right? Absolutely. I, 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 this, you know, every multimillionaire, every billionaire, most of them own real estate. Most of them own commercial real estate, um, the big guys, and they're all making really good money. So Absolutely. it's not a matter of, does it work? It does work. Now mm -hmm. just figure out, like you said, be resourceful, learn the information, get a mentor, work for free, you know, put your head down, put on the gas, go, go, go type mentality. And I promise you, you'll be successful. Awesome. You know, and, mm -hmm. and really, you know, I think, uh, you know, how quick you get there really just depends on you. Sure. Um, and you know, if you learn how to 10 X everything, um, you know, you can get there pretty quick. So, awesome. Um, awesome. Mm. yeah, that's, that's kind of my, uh, my closing statement. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. How about you, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, Mauricio? <laughs> for sure. Thanks, Akar. And again, thanks, thanks for having us. We really appreciate it. Um, absolutely. there's two more, two more ideas that I want to share, uh, before, before closing out. So get a vision board. Uh, if, if, if the listeners don't know what the vision board is, definitely suggest just go sure. Google mm -hmm. it and you'll find exactly where it is. Get a vision board and, and a goal without a plan is just, is just a dream. So sure. make sure you have a plan and do it. Right. And then lastly, uh, to connect with what Adrian said, you got to be hungry, right? And if you want to, you want to learn what I mean by you got to be hungry, go, go to YouTube right. and type, you got to be hungry by Les Brown and you'll just listen to like 20 sure. minute video. Mm -hmm. It's super uh, motivational. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. Lastly, uh, you can find us at, uh, so on Instagram, we're at Demedici, which is D-E-M-E-D-I-C-I, -I, like the Italian last name, Demedici mm -hmm. underscore group. Uh, also same on Facebook, we're Demedici group all together and uh, Demedici group.com. You can go there. Uh, you can, there's a place where you can send us a message and you, we'll get it and we will get back with you. And there's also a place where you can um, schedule a 15 minute interview with me. Sure. Mm -hmm. So you, so if you want to talk to me, I'll be happy to talk to, uh, to, talk to uh, any of your listeners about real estate. 
So just go in there and then you can schedule a quick interview and mm -hmm. then we'll, we'll get on the calendar. Sure, sure. As someone who has experienced a lot of downs and some of the ups that never seemed great, I always like to say this, the power of hardship and struggle is extremely powering. I repeat that again, the power of struggle and hardships is extremely powering. And with that, I thank you both of you and I appreciate your time. And for our listeners, you can always find us at premiumcashflow.com. And we're always there with news tips and articles and great guests, uh, just like Mauricio and Adrian today. So thank you, gentlemen, and I wish you well. And I look forward to great things from you and looking forward to connect with you again in future. Thanks a lot. Absolutely. Thanks, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Scar. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Premium Cashflow Real Estate Investing Podcast. Please join us at premiumcashflow.com to sign up for weekly updates, research articles, and more. We will see you again for another great interview with an expert guest.